Confession. These are the slow poisons that saturate the most brilliant mind until it becomes dank and spongy, a cavern of foul and nauseous thoughts hidden away from the light of the sun, a secret place where no longer live the clean structures of love or honor or decency. As the twisting roots of destruction dig deeper and stronger, interlocking like the fibers of some malignant cancer. And so, in just a moment, the story of the hangman starring Tom Conway. This is the story of the hangman, the hooded man skilled in the subtle arts of the hempen noose, the springer of the trap. In a small town in the south of England, in a wayside inn, a young man sits at a table, tense, expectant, obviously nervous, and even more obviously held in the vice of some strange and decidedly urgent obsession. Sit down. Oh, I'm sorry to be late. Have you been waiting long? Twenty minutes. What a danger, Nelly. And Alice. She hasn't been feeling well. I couldn't get away. You mean you couldn't sneak away without her seeing you, isn't that it? No, darling. No, that's not true. There's no need to deny, Nelly. I'm aware that your aunt doesn't approve of me. Oh, it's not you personally, Oliver. It's just that, well, Aunt Alice is frightfully set in her ways. She believes that you should have a steady position, an income. Oh, I see. As she prefers that I give up my painting, find a job as a day laborer, a three pound a week clerk, or, or perhaps a news vendor. Yes, there's a nice steady position. Oliver, you're in another mood. Possibly. Oh, darling, darling, don't let's quarrel. It's such a beautiful day. Don't let's spoil it. I'm spoiling your day? Oh, forgive me. I didn't mean that. It's just, well, the things you say. I... Oh, what would you like me to say? Say that you understand. No, Nellie, I can't understand. There can never be an understanding at this rate. Meeting in dark corners, afraid we might be seen together as though we were criminals. I know, I know. Nellie, we could put an end to this deceit. We could. I've asked you many times before. I ask you again. Nellie, will you be my wife? Your wife? Yes. Oh, Oliver, I... I love you, Nellie. And I love you. You know that. Then... I want to. Yes, I'll marry you. Darling, let's leave here. I'll pay the tab and... Oh, uh, Nelly. Oh, well, of course, darling. Here's the money. And so, Nelly and I were married in a little church just outside the village. Afterwards, we drove home in Nelly's car, 
she wanted to break the news to her aunt. Nellie was convinced that the old woman would feel differently toward me now that we were married. But she didn't. Her aunt wouldn't even see me. Well, we just had to make the best of it. Nellie had some money of her own, and so we bought a small house in Middlesbrough. It was a quaint little place, had an attic that we converted into a studio where I could do my painting. Nellie and I were very happy there for a time. Good afternoon, Mr. Copeland. <laughs> Good afternoon, Mrs. Copeland. Then how is my rising young artist coming with his work today? I've started my new and best painting, Nellie. Look, do you like it? Yes. Although it seems a little... Almost weird. Yes, yes, that, that's the way it was meant. I, I'm not nearly finished, of course. I, I'm just starting to sketch in the background. Uh, but it has life to it, hasn't it, Nellie? Yes, it has more than that. It even frightens you a bit. Ah, then it must be good. I, I hope to finish it in time to take it to the exhibit in London next month. Oh, uh, that reminds me, dear, I'll need some money. Oh, Oliver. Oliver, I've been meaning to tell you. Yes, dear? There isn't any more money. What was that you said? There isn't any more money. It's dwindled away steadily ever since we came here. You see, darling, I didn't have too much to begin with, and, and after buying this house... But I thought there was plenty. You led me to believe there was plenty. Oh, I didn't, Oliver. Really, I didn't. Well, what are we to do now? Well, I've been thinking... I've been thinking perhaps Aunt Alice would be of help. Perhaps she'd change her mind about it if you'd find a position, darling, for just a little while, until we get, get straightened out again. You could still paint. I see. So you've turned against me, too. No, darling, no, certainly not. Oh, Oliver, it would only be for a few months. Only a I... few months? And what of the London exhibit in the meanwhile? I suppose you'd just as soon have me wait until next year to no, go. No, I want you to go. But I don't see how in the world we can possibly... Afford it? We'll afford it, all right. I'll get that money somehow. I'll get it. <laughs> I was furious with her. She had led me to believe she was wealthy, and, and now... Now we'd come to this. I left the house, and, and I walked. I, how far, I don't know. I, I had to think. My entire career might depend on my new painting and the London exhibit. I had to find a way to get that money. Then, that night, in our neighborhood, the thing started. The papers said that it happened close to 11 o'clock in the evening... A woman was walking home alone down Cedar Grove. Yes? Who's there? Who's... Oh! <laughs> the woman was found beneath a tree, stabbed to death, and her purse was gone. The following morning, Nellie and I had a caller. Someone at the door. I'll get it. Good morning, miss. Good morning. I'm Inspector Lamont, Scotland Yard. I've been called in by the local police for routine checkup in this neighbourhood, and I... Who is it? The man from Scotland Yard. Scotland Yard? What's he doing here? Oh, please don't be alarmed, sir. Just a routine checkup. You see, we had a rather nasty bit of business in this neighbourhood last evening. Oh, yes, you mean the killing on Cedar Grove? Yes. How did you know, sir? We were just reading about it. Oh. Well, I dropped in to ask you if you've noticed any strangers loitering around this district lately. No. No, I can't say that we have. I see. Well, sorry to trouble you. Necessary thing, though, you know. Oh, of course. I certainly hope you find the guilty party. We usually do. Well, uh, good morning. Good morning. That wasn't the last I was to see of Inspector Lamond, nor was that the last murder. They began occurring with startling regularity. One, two in a week, right under the very noses of the police, always in the same district, always a woman, stabbed to death, her purse gone. One morning, some ten days after the inspector's first visit, I was leaving the house when Nellie stopped me at the door. Oliver, Oliver, you won't be late tonight again. I might be. But why? Where do you go at night, Oliver? Why 
do you leave me alone? I told you, I, I walk. I, I enjoy walking. Why do you ask me ridiculous questions? I won't ask questions. I won't say a word. You'll only stay here with me at night. I'm frightened. These killings, they happen all the time now. And, and always right around us. Oh, really now, Nellie, you're acting like a child. But I can't help it. I am, I, I'm, I'm frightened. Yes, yes, of course you are. I'm sorry. Oh, Oliver. Now, 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 no tears. Look, I have a surprise for you, Nellie. Surprise? Yes, I, I was saving it, but here. Ten pounds. Where did you get it, Oliver? I uh, sold a painting, the one I call Blue Meadow, uh, to an art dealer in town named Dubois. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes, well, the money's all yours, Nellie. I'll be home early. Good night. Inspector Lamont, you come in. Thank you. What brings you by this morning? Mrs. Copeland, I'm afraid that I'm going to have to ask you some questions about your husband. My husband? What is it? Now, please answer carefully. These are some things I must know. I understand from the neighbors that you and your husband have been quarreling lately. Is that true? Well, we have our little difference. And your but... husband stays out evenings until quite late. Tell me, do you know where he goes, Mrs. Copeland? Yes, he, uh, he goes walking. He likes to get out in the fresh air after painting all day. Oh, he's an artist? Yes. Does his profession afford him an adequate income? Well, wait. You're not thinking that my husband could have anything to I'm do with... I'm simply asking you some very important questions that you must answer. Does your husband have an adequate income? Well, well, we're, we're comfortable. Uh, okay. Then, have you seen him with any extra money? Has he, uh, has he given you any? Well, come, come, has he? No. I see. Uh, well, thank you, Mrs. Copeland. Sorry to have troubled you again. Good day. Good day. The money for a painting. Yes, it was for a painting. Blue Meadow. Dubois. Dubois. D, 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 R, D, U. It is Dubois. Artilla. Uh, this is Mrs. Nellie Copeland. Mrs. Nellie Copeland, yes? Yes, I'd like some information. Did you purchase a portrait from a Mr. Oliver Copeland titled Blue Meadow? Blue Meadow? Uh, was it an original work? Yes. Well, I could not have purchased it then. Are you sure? Positive. I have not bought an original art piece for over a year. Well, thank you. Oliver. Oliver! <laughs> full import of the neighborhood murders strikes home now, and a dark, ugly cloud of fear and suspicion settles in the mind of Nellie Copeland. Her husband a murderer? Or could it be a mere coincidence? There are reasons, of course, for suspicion. The strange attitudes of her husband, his unaccountable nocturnal meanderings through dark streets and the headlines of death in the mornings. These thoughts grow in the mind of Nellie Copeland, build, gather momentum, until they become solidified into a powerful obsession.
artist Copeland and his wife, Nellie, and the house of Middleborough that stands in the shadows of the hangman starring Tom Conway. Try as she may, Nellie Copeland cannot escape the secret dread that lurks in her heart as fact piles upon fact and the stern finger of suspicion points ever closer toward her husband, Oliver, her husband that has changed so much as to be almost a stranger, living alone in a world of his own creating, a world seemingly filled by the apparitions of some inexplainable obsession. It was two days later. The London art exhibit was but a fortnight away, and my painting, my masterpiece, the one that Nellie had called rather weird, was almost completed. Then a thought occurred to me. My London trip was to be a success. I should have to meet people of importance and influence, take in a social affair or two. And yes, I need more money. Where was I to get it? Then suddenly I knew. It was all so very simple. Nellie. Yes, Oliver? Uh, Nellie, I've been thinking. I'll be off for London in a fortnight, and, uh, well, Nellie, with these uh, horrid Jack the Ripper sort of killings here in our neighborhood, I rather dislike the idea of leaving you alone. It would be very nice if you could have your aunt come and visit you. Aunt Alice? Yes. Inasmuch as I'll not be here, she should have no objection to accepting her niece's hospitality for a short while. I shall feel considerably more at ease, Nellie, if you would ask your aunt to come and stay with you. I'll write Aunt Alice and ask her to come. Thank you, Nellie. Nellie scribbled a note to her aunt. At my suggestion, she requested the old woman to come to Middlesbrough on the 15th. I was not due to leave for London until the 16th. But of course, I couldn't tell Nellie that. We received a reply in the mail the following afternoon. Aunt Alice would come on the 15th at 6 p.m. I arrived at the station to meet her. The train from Cushing was on time. It uh, was going on eight when I returned home. Oh, oh, Oliver, I was wondering what kept you. I... Was that Alice? Isn't she here? Here? How could she be here? I thought you went to the train. Uh, yes, but uh, I was late. I uh, had a bit of motor trouble. I, I didn't get to the station until half past six, and uh, she wasn't there. I uh, thought I'd missed her, but she'd come ahead to the house. Well, perhaps the train was late. Oh, no, I inquired. It was on time. Oliver, you don't think anything could have happened to her? Oh, of course not. It's very likely that she just couldn't get reservations on the evening train. It sometimes happens, you know, and so she's taken a later one. We had just finished our supper when the doorbell rang. It was the boy with the evening paper. Nelly went to the door. The boy it was quite late this evening. I thought it strange. Oliver! Oliver! Yes, Nelly, what is it? Oh, a special edition. They, they found the killer. What killer? Well, the one who's been committing all those murders in the neighborhood. Found him? Let me see that paper. Yes, Oliver. Simon Reynolds, 34. Arrested in Wales last night. Gave police a full confession this morning for the Middleborough Jack the Ripper slayings. Wales? Wales, that... That's more than an overnight journey from here. And he hasn't been in this vicinity for days. What, Oliver? Nothing, Nellie, nothing. Oh, oh, the phone, I'll get it. Hello? Hello, is this Mrs. Nelly Copeland? Yes? This is the Tupa Art Gallery. I am calling in reference to that painting you asked me about yesterday, the Blue Meadow. Yes? Well, we did purchases after all. That is my associate did, and he forgot to tell me about it. I thought perhaps you'd like to know. Oh, yes. Yes, I, I, I do know. Everything's all right. Everything's just fine. Goodbye. You know, Oliver, I'm so happy. I'm so relieved. I just can't... Oliver? Oliver, where is he? Oliver! <laughs> It was awkward to leave the house that way, but I had much time. I drove over to a vacant lot on Charing Cross Road. Everything was as I left it, nothing discovered. 
I decided to park the car in the alleyway in the rear of our house and wait until Nellie had gone to sleep. When the light in her room was finally turned out, I slipped in the house through the back door, went down into the cellar. I took every precaution so as not to awaken Nellie, but to no avail, she heard me from upstairs. Oliver? What do you want, Nellie? What are you doing down there, Oliver? I, uh... It's the hot water heater. It's broken. I was fixing it. But it's after two in the morning, Oliver. And if it is, I I'll have to fix it sometime, won't I? I'll go back to bed. But I... Oh, Nelly, go back to bed. She did as I told her. That was one thing I liked about Nelly. Next morning, Nelly wanted to know where I'd been during the evening. She was more insistent than usual, almost suspicious. But I finally managed to pass it off by mentioning that it was time for me to go to the railway station to see if her aunt had arrived. I got to the station rather early, 20 past nine. I went to the window and asked for my reservation on the London train. Then, as I turned to leave, I bumped into the man I least wanted to see. Good morning, Mr. Copeland. Oh, Inspector Lamont, good morning. Hmm, taking a trip? Yes, I'm going to London for the art exhibit. Really? Well, I'll be going to London myself this afternoon. Back to the yard now that all this nasty business is cleaned up. Yes, well, have a nice trip. Good morning. Good morning to you. Well, rather unsociable fellow. Good morning, Mrs. Copeland. Oh, oh, good morning, Inspector. Will you come in? Thank you. I, uh, I ran into your husband at the railway station, and it reminded me that I had an apology to make. An apology? Yes. I do hope you don't feel too badly toward me for that last rather professional visit of mine, line of duty and all that sort of thing, you know. Of course, I understand. Fine, then. Uh, your husband tells me he's going to London. Yes, to the exhibit. He's going to enter one of his paintings. He's really a very good artist. <laughs> well, he certainly has the temperament. Do you know, I started to chat with him at the station and suddenly he just turned and went off in a huff and drove away in his car. Drove away? But it isn't even ten o'clock yet. Uh, I beg your pardon? You say he drove away? What time was it, Inspector? Oh, I should say a little before 9.30. But he went there to meet my aunt. We were expecting her on the 10 o'clock train from Cushing. Your aunt? Yes, she was really due in it last evening at 6. Oliver went to the station, but she wasn't there. Well, uh, haven't you telephoned your aunt to find out what the trouble was? Well, I, I thought to last night, but Oliver said she'd surely be in this morning, so there was no need to worry. And yet he left the station this morning without waiting. Isn't that rather odd, Mrs. Copeland? Yes, it is. Very. When did your husband return home from the station last night? Well, he was home for supper. It was around eight. And then... Oh. Yes? What is it? Go well, on. He went out again. He didn't come home until quite late. He wakened me when he came in. He, he was fixing our water heater in the cellar. Fixing a water heater in the cellar at that late hour? Mrs. Copeland, I'd like to have a look at your cellar. Oh, it, it's right down here. Uh, perhaps you'd better wait up here, Mrs. Copeland. No, no, please, I'll come. Very well. Everything appears to be in love with it. I say, hold on a moment. What is it? Here, this section. It's freshly laying cement. Oh! Hand me that pick axe over there. Please, Mrs. Copeland. Here? Yes, thank you. <coughs> Mrs. Copeland, look here, and please try to keep hold of yourself. I'm afraid that what you're going to see won't be very... Oh! Nelly, where are... Oh, Inspector Lamond, what are you doing here? I've been waiting for you, Copeland. Waiting for... The cellar door, it's open. Who's been... Your wife and I have been down there. You're under arrest, Copeland. Oh. So you know. Nelly, too? Yes. Why did you do it, Copeland? She was old and wealthy. She'd lived her life... Alive, she was of no use to anyone, but dead. Your wife would inherit her money and you'd benefit from it. Yes. But why the body in the cellar? Uh, unavoidable circumstances. After I did it, I left her body in a vacant lot on Charing Cross Road. I thought when it was discovered that her murder would be just another one attributed to our Jack the Ripper friend. Hmm. But, of course, when he was apprehended in Wales, well, my plans had to be altered. I see. Well, I think we'd best be getting along. 
Uh, uh, one moment. Uh, this portrait here, I should like to take it with me. May I? Well, I don't see why not. Take it. Thank you. But I say the, the figure, the man is very well done, but the, the background. But why, isn't that a gallows you painted? Yes, it is. Oh, uh, and this really should give you quite a chuckle, Inspector. I call the portrait the hangman. <laughs> Ironic, isn't it? That a subconscious mind oft times reveals inward secrets in the outward expression of art. Oliver used the murky colors of his own mind to mix the oils that spread across that taut canvas that portrays so realistically the cross arms of the gibbet the swinging knotted noose, and the stolid, remorseless figure of the hangman. And so Oliver Copeland's pathway leads him to 13 steps and terminates with the crash of the trap that shall obliterate forever a mind that lost its free agency in the powerful grip of a greed-filled obsession. In just a moment, I'll be back with a preview of next week's story. vignette of next week's story, when Peter Van Eyck brings you the narrative of a summer evening, when an enduring obsession was created on the altar of love, when two minds become fused in the common purpose of mankind. You'll find deathless purpose that held high the eternal torch of a great and magnificent love in next week's story of Obsession. Tonight's story was produced and transcribed under the direction of C.P. McGregor in Hollywood.